Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ukulele Underground Podcast. My name is Aldrin Guerrero. Joining me are Mr. Aaron, the voice. Nakamura, say what's up, Aaron. And Mr. Kahai, the legend. Fergan, say what's up, Kahai. What's up? What up, legend? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what up, buddy? Sure. How, how are you? I missed you. Uh, good. I didn't, well, I didn't see you this me. weekend. Yeah, I do. I didn't uh, see you this weekend. I saw you last night at the Ukulele Club. Okay. But, you know, any... Any amount of time that I'm away from you, Kahai, I'm like, oh, I wonder what Kahai's thinking of right now. Oh. <laughs> I wonder uh, who, I wonder who Kahai is showing chords to. What is know? it? Like, is it? He's dreaming about me. <laughs> Somewhere. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Sometimes I wonder if you're looking at the same bright sky that I'm looking at. If we're looking at the same stars, Kahai. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just a little mouse in America. <laughs> Yeah, no, for real. <laughs> Start, starting off the show with references that nobody understands. Yeah, yeah. hey, yeah. if you haven't seen Fievel, American. American, yeah, American Tale, or Fievel Goes West, you know, you're, you're missing out a lot. You're missing out some, on some uh, American animation classics. Check it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, American Tale. Tales in T-A-I-L. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, gentlemen, this is the uh, Ukulele on the Ground podcast. Uh, so what we do here is to get some questions because we are live. This is a live podcast going on right now. So all of you people who are watching this live on YouTube can basically type on uh, in the live chat um, some questions. We'll answer them as best as we can. I'll give you my two cents about your question. Uh, the other two guys are going to give their two cents. We're going to come up with the best six cent answer just for you. If you're watching this as a replay, feel free to comment below if you have a question. Feel free to comment below if you have any comments, you know, just like let us know. Oh, bam, no, wrong. This is how you make a whatever chord, you know. You can do that. We're fine. We have Teflon skin. You can, cor- you can, uh, you can correct us, right, Kai? Yeah. Because I said... I was going to answer your question, but what I'm going to answer you with is not actually the answers. It's opinions. So we have O's for all of your Q's. That's how it works here, right, Kahai? Uh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you guys have questions. We'll give you uh, our best take based on our experiences. Um, you know, myself as an individual, like, and us as a group together, and, you know, these guys as an individual as well. And we'll try to give you the best advice that, that we know of, okay? So don't take this as gospel. It's not like, you know, a- a- unless it's like a mathematical question, where there's all an absolute answer, right, Kahai? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. No, 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 no. That's up to them. If if they if they feel like asking us that and like potentially getting it wrong, pro- like high potentially, you know, <laughs> getting it wrong, it, then what else on them? You know what I mean? Like we're not gonna do your homework for you, but if you ask us to do your homework, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do it. But that's that's on you of what score you get for your homework, <laughs> right, Kahai? I'm pretty sure I passed high school trig uh, mm. with a C, you know, but it's still passed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yay. C's get degrees. Yep. yep, for sure. <laughs> that's that's what my friend who became a doctor, he is he is now he is now a uh, a doctor. That's what he used to say. And now he's a doctor. So <laughs> I'm not gonna say what field he's in <laughs> or his name. So good luck, people out there with <laughs> that are <laughs> nah. He's uh he's he's all good now. He's really cleaned up his act. <laughs> nah. But that's what he used to say all the time. Kai sees, get degrees. And and he's look, not wrong. Yeah, he's, he's, not, he's not he's not wrong. But kids, aim for higher, please. <laughs> okay. Uncle Aldi will tell you to just try to reach for those A's because the A's are the ones that I, I want to go to for for my my yearly checkup. <laughs> You can, it's like, uh, this podcast is like a good family. There's like one uncle who's like, I expect A's from you. And then yeah. there's another uncle who's like, nah, just whatever. Just, <laughs> just get the degree. Just whatever you can. <laughs> and there's another uncle that will take the karaoke mic and go, there's a light, a certain kind of light. You know, we have all kinds of uncles in this show, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what do you guys want to talk about? Uh, yeah. So first off, yeah. uh, we thought that we would let you uh, talk about your weekend. And, oh, and, nice. Because you hung out with some pretty some cool legends this, yeah. this weekend. Yeah. So um, like I mentioned, uh, I think I mentioned it last week and I also mentioned it on the uh, Friday Jams. Um, I, I went to Oahu this this past weekend. That's uh, another island from, from where we're from for the people who are not you know, familiar with uh, how Hawaii is and different islands. So we, uh, myself, Aaron, and Kahai live on the island of Kauai. So Kauai is is basically the westernmost point island that, we, you know, with, with a big population. Okay. So um, Oahu is the island right next to us 
to the east. All right. Now, uh, Oahu is where all the legends are. You know, like um, that's where Jake is from. That's where Herb Ota is from. That's where Craig and Sarah is. That's where you know. Um, that's where Calais Gamiel lives. That's where like Abe, Cynthia Lynn now. You know, like so. That's if if we're talking, you know, like an island full of nothing but like that just ukulele gods <laughs> it's that's basically where you want to go so um i went to oahu and um and yeah and just kind of hung out i went there for a concert i, I went with with uh, with tito boy i don't know if he's is on the ch on the chat or anything sometimes he i think it's his day off today so you know he's um he might be watching the chat or he might be sleeping because it was a long 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 weekend so he might not even be awake all right hope he's alive though you know because <laughs> uh it was it was crazy and it was very busy so um we we went we went to go watch Paroke and Edgar. Um, Easy Mill was uh, was um, an, an opener. Also, also Rain Rain is another one that was that was there as well. Filipino singer songwriter artist that that's also upcoming. And um, and what was cool was there was a lot of local openers. Like they let a bunch of local people, um, like some high school kids. You know, like uh, there's maybe like five high school like singers and, and performers that were there from like from Oahu like it was some local performers I was really I was really shocked and I was very impressed and there's like um there's a local performer and that's why I, I, I did the Bee Gees reference with the uncle like you know because uh, one of the openers was like a like a Filipino uncle <laughs> And he sang that that Bee Gees song, oh, and like the crowd was into it, and they were singing along. You don't know what it's like, baby. You don't know what it's like to love somebody. It's like it was like it was amazing. Like <laughs> uncle, like uncle, basically did the biggest karaoke gig that he's ever done. That he's ever done, and he was amazing at it. I was so impressed. He was my favorite opening, you know, uh, 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 opener for for yeah. and Edgar. Sands, Rain, and uh, and an Easy Mill, of course. But I thought, I thought he was amazing. Loved it. Like just the confidence, just the uh, you know, just the stage presence that he had. He exuded that. Like, like, yup, I'm having the time of my life, and therefore I had the time of my life. You know, like he he looked like he was having fun. So yeah, it was it was a good time. Um, it was nice because like Parok and Edgar is my favorite, you know, my, my favorite band, like Filipino band, which is one of my favorite bands in general. And it was it was really nice to see it. I think it's my third time seeing them, fourth time seeing them. And um and they they always rock out. And like I was taking notes, man. Like the their front guy, Chito Miranda, is a uh, really, really good. And he did the the same shtick that we do with like like, oh, you know, like if you write it on a hundred dollar bill, but he did it to like the next level. It was amazing, dude. And it um some of the jokes that I remember that, that he told he told online. He's like, okay, well Hawaii, this is the last leg of our tour, you know? Like so uh you know if you guys don't mind, maybe you know uh, usually like if we're having a good time, we just keep playing. You know, like we just we uh we play more songs and people are like, yeah yeah, it's like yeah, but this is our, our you know this is our last leg, so you know we're gonna do something really special. And they we're like yeah, do it, play even longer. They're like yeah, we're gonna play even longer. It's like yeah, awesome. And it's like actually we'll make it even more special. We'll play a little shorter, <laughs> so it's super unique. You guys are the only ones that are gonna get this very unique experience. <laughs> we're gonna play shorter songs, and then you know. Carlos, he was really, 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 really like engaging, hilarious, and and really gets the vibe like that the band like puts out. It was it was, it was awesome. So like the he goes, oh, you know, we we don't have a set list, so we don't know how many songs you know we're allowed to play, but who cares, right? I was like, you guys down? Do you guys mind you know like sitting here for like for for 160 songs? <laughs> we're like yeah, yeah, you know we're, we're you know we're, we're super into it. And he goes, you know, so since we don't have a set list, you know. Like, like we just play whatever and if you guys have any requests like just shout out your requests but you know if you want to get it expedited maybe write it on a like on a five dollar you know and uh, if you really if you really want to expedite it you know uh, so what we'll think about doing that song if you if you write on a ten dollar maybe we'll do that song next <laughs> if you write it on a fifty dollar bill then you know we'll uh well i don't care if we're in the middle of the song we're gonna stop that song we're gonna do your request and it's like if you put a hundred dollars if you you know if i if you write a hundred dollar bill even if it's not our song we're gonna play it tonight so there's like layers of that joke that that he just like expanded on yeah. and it was insane because people were so into it people were actually throwing hundred dollar bills 
onto the stage. Yeah. I was like, wow, when do I get to be like that, you know, uh, that kind of rock star status where people are throwing hundreds at me? Like, yeah. I, don't even, I don't even care how degrading that feels. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's funny being chucked at you on stage while you're having the time of your life, you know? And um, so, so, yeah, it, it, like, and every time somebody threw a hundred, he would like, he would make a joke and he would acknowledge that person, you know, like, and, and make that person feel like, oh yeah, I, like I paid a hundred bucks for that experience. <laughs> yeah. like, just now interacting with Chito on stage. It was, it was amazing. It, it, he, he really, really, really knows how to, you know, I mean, but Parokin Edgar has been like a touring band, like for about 20, 30 years. So uh-huh. it's been, it's been insane. Like how really really good and, and just kind of watching actual professionals like you know do do their jobs so yeah. me as a somewhat of a professional like kind of watching and, and taking notes and just like how he carries himself the things that he says how he engages his audience it was i learned a lot it was uh-huh. really really good um and then well you know like yesterday uh no it's just saturday morning we we flew in um tito boy and i we hung out with with the gamiao so i hung out with uh with kale gamiao and his family it was uh, uncle derek's birthday so we i brought over some uh, some liliha and he was he's a big fan of liliha we went to konos shout out to konos uh north shore um that's K- kale introduced me to to Kono's and he's like uh, and he goes oh get, just get whatever you want I'm like oh biscuits and gravy sounds pretty good because mm-hmm. we don't get bis- biscuits and gravy here on Kono or at least not good ones sorry yeah. for anybody who you know like yeah. let me know you know prove me wrong there was one place and then they oh, moved. Nom, yeah, nom, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> prove me wrong if you're on Koi and you make great biscuits and gravy you're like Aldrin I- I'm gonna shut you up what? and make you the best biscuit yeah, please yeah. <laughs> please yeah. please isn't it a Pillsbury Doughboy biscuit <laughs> <laughs> and then you just take the gravy from Locomoco McCormick right? <laughs> <laughs> McCormick no it's supposed to be white gravy Locomoco gravy is brown see you already got it wrong oh, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think no I think they got it wrong <laughs> <laughs> is that country like white yeah, gravy yeah, that yeah McCormick yeah. makes that <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, cream, cream of mushroom oh. yeah. <laughs> so okay so I was like oh the the, uh, the biscuits and gravy sounds pretty good and he's like oh Adrian check that out and he pointed at the at this part in the menu it says biscuits and gravy burrito I'm like <laughs> what <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> biscuits and gravy but handheld amazing <laughs> uh-huh. and that was the first time I had biscuits and gravy burrito which is like Oh, twice the carbs. Yeah. It, yeah. Love it. Love is there, it. Is there anything else in that? Yeah. Or is that just, it's a carb burrito? <laughs> <laughs> it's carb burrito. <laughs> it was, a, yeah, it was just biscuits and gravy. <laughs> you know, and, and like, and, and the, the sausage, you know, that it goes with it. But as just w- like with anything else, there wasn't enough gravy. But they could have like given me like a... Um, like a whole tub of gravy and like hid the burrito inside that gravy uh-huh. and it still wouldn't be enough gravy. You, know? <laughs> uh-huh. you want what is it, a smothered burrito yeah. with biscuit and gravy? That's what you wanted. <laughs> so shout out to Konos and Konos, yeah? So if uh, if you guys are on Oahu, go, go get them. Go check them out. And I think they have Konos. I saw that they had one in, in Waikiki as well. So like either on the south in Waikiki, you get some Konos or, you, or get it at the north at the... Uh, at the original location i think it's the original location up in haleiba so it was cool get, catching up with the gummy house i got to jam with clay you know a little bit i got to talk to him about like anue nui usa who, mm-hmm. who he's you know the owner of he's the owner of anue nui uh, him and Corey, and you know he's those the, the part owners of anue nui usa um he showed us you know like some of the stock that he had showed us the moonbird and like and, and mm-hmm. the, the ukulele and stuff and got, tried to convince um tito boy to go get one <laughs> he's like oh i'll give you a discount and uh-huh. he's like oh snap where's the nearest first hawaiian bank because like yeah. <laughs> yeah. the tito boys he's so tito that he doesn't he doesn't have like any kind of electronic means to pay anyone oh yeah, yeah. no <laughs> just, venmo yo know, no venmo you know. no credit card no not even like a debit card none of that stuff yeah. he's old school tito boy is old school so uh kale is like oh but i guess you know like he he lucked out because if he did have an electronic way to pay <laughs> kale he yeah. definitely would have picked it up yeah. but he's not you know walking around with two grand in his pocket <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> so uh yeah so that was that was our day um uncle derek happy birthday shout out to uncle derek uh hung out with kale's mom jammed with kale like the whole time we played some good stuff and i think uncle derek filmed some of that stuff so maybe i'll ask him for some of that for that for that video maybe we could post it on our instagram 
But uh, getting to jam with Kalei again in that kind of setting, because last time I jammed with him was the, uh, was the podcast. So um, I got to jam in a very, like, just free, you know, yeah. uh, without cameras rolling, uh, other, I guess, other than uh, Uncle, Uncle Derek's um, phone. But it was just no stress. We, we played uh, One Day Soon. We played Certain Shade of Green by Incubus. Because <laughs> I kind of wanted to see Kalei, like, solo on that chord progression. Because it's like three different keys, you know, uh, like that, uh-huh. that it goes to. Uh, and, and just a bunch of a bunch of songs, and it was so much fun. Just getting to jam with my friend again, and it reminded me we were like talking about the good old days of like of Thailand, and um, and when we, we used to be like on on the tour bus, and uh, we would be you know like those like rascal kids in the back of the bus, just <laughs> yeah. like just making those. We're still playing our ukulele, we're like dueling, and they were like trading kind of ideas and, and, and solos and stuff, and. And uh, yeah, it was it was a it was a great time, and of course, Uncle Derek was part of that trip as well. He was basically our tour dad, uh-huh. so uh, Uncle Derek is my tour dad, and you know he would wave, he was wag his he would wag his finger if I did you know, got into trouble or whatever. But <laughs> basically, he was my tour dad. It was nice to kind of reminisce with uh, with with the Gamiao family. And then after we went to Ukulele sites, we met with Corey and uh, Tito Boy. His only comments was. I didn't realize how tall Corey is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy is in the chat. Oh, boy is in the chat. Oh, nice, yeah. nice, nice. He said that he's alive. And- oh, okay, yeah. good, good. I'm glad you're alive. <laughs> it's, it was insane. And, um, you know, like, Corey, for those of you go, uh, for those of you folks who've never seen him in person and who's only seen him in the, on the Ukulele site podcast, <laughs> he's a tall dude. I think he's like six foot. <laughs> or like six one or something. He's yeah. pretty tall. Or well, like because all of us are short. Yeah, yeah I guess <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. Maybe maybe he just feels I guess like he's on, the, six on feet. the mainland. He's not yeah. that tall. Yeah, but, he's yeah. you know he's he's pretty tall. And and boy, I think is like five 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 six. And he was looking up at like you know yeah. at uh at Corey because he was like, I didn't realize you're so tall in the <laughs> yeah. podcast. You know, on the video podcast, you, sitting down. Yeah, you don't you don't recognize. But he's a tall dude, and um, kind of getting the jam with him. And uh, there was um. There's a guy in, in the service that came in. He was looking for a baritone ukulele. He recognized. He's, he, he walked in the room. He's like, whoa, what's going on <laughs> at the ukulele site store today? He's, uh-huh. There's Aldrin. There's Khaled. There's Corey. You know? uh-huh. It's like a gathering of like, <laughs> uh, uh, of like ukulele you know, like yeah. personalities. It was really cool. And then um, Zen came in. He, he works at Kanilea. And, uh, and he has a couple of layers that he brought in and stuff. And same thing, he walked in the door. He's like, oh, <laughs> what's, what's going on? Like, is it my birthday? <laughs> you know? um, yeah, they're really cool. You know, got to, got to meet those dudes. And, and um, we, we kind of, we, we did a small little jam. Um, we hung out a little bit. Uh, Kalei had a gig to go to. And we went to go check in the hotel. Went to the show after. And then after the, um, uh, oh, so... I don't usually like. I don't usually. Let's see. I don't usually try to pull rank or, or try to use my uh, my Z list celebrity <laughs> you know status, status yeah. for for anything. Uh-huh. But it was my mission this weekend to make sure that my friend Tito Boy had the time of his life. Okay, <laughs> and the reason why I went to go, I uh, mean, to see Kale, uh, he's he's a good friend, and I'm always down to see Kale. Yeah. But because Tito Boy is a huge Ukulele Site podcast fan, yeah. And that's why I went to see Kale, and then I went to see Corey after. So I'm like, hey, I know those guys, you know. <laughs> so I pulled that card, like uh-huh. that that uh, Z list celebrity card, that I know other like celebrities, you know, like <laughs> so I introduced him to you know to Kale and then to Corey, and he's like he just fangirled, you know, like the, the whole time. He's just giggly, like you know, um. And then that night, Parokin Edgar is Tito Boy's favorite band. Just, just straight up, yeah. his favorite band, like ever. Not even favorite Filipino, that's his favorite band, you know? And um, thanks to our good friend Alden Meneses, um, you know, from, from, uh, from NorCal. Shout out to Alden, you know, wherever you're at. Um, his cousin is Buhawi, which is the bass player for Parokin Edgar. So, uh, so I, I've met him before. We've hung out and stuff, you know. Um, so I've, you know, Alden kind of, uh, he, he made my wish come true. But mm-hmm. like, you know, introduced me to him. But then again, I hung out with like the whole band. We were hanging out backstage and stuff. And, and, and you know, um, I, I played uh, so my, my ukulele for Bowie and, and the guys. It was, it was a good time. So. Yeah, I, what, this was like years yeah, this ago. was years ago. So I wanted kind of that same experience for my friend Tito Boy. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you could have a meet and greet with the band, but that's like an extra hundred dollars, hundred fifty dollars, and the tickets already were like a hundred bucks or yeah, something, yeah. you know, so hundred twenty bucks. Have the VIP yeah, tickets. we're just kind of like, okay, well, we just want to go for the experience, you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. It might be cool, like to go to go meet them again. But for me, I'm like, I've already like met them. I don't know if I'm ready to make a like a hundred fifty dollar commitment <laughs> to like to say hi to my friend. You know what I mean? Like I don't. I mean, you know, like he's he's cool. He's like my hero and all. But like, hey, hundred fifty bucks, hundred fifty bucks. If I have two children at home, you know. <laughs> so, uh, we there was like two other things happening like at, at the convention center where where it was being held at. There was like a volleyball tournament, and there was like some kind of um, expo. So everyone's trying to leave the convention center at the same time. We're yeah. just kind of deadlocked, you know. And we were supposed to meet up with Abe Lagrimus at this at this other place, you know, this bar. And uh, and it was like uh, he said that he's gonna be in there at nine thirty. It was currently ten o'clock, and we're uh. late already. The place closes at eleven. So I'm like, oh my god, do we just like repark because we're not moving? You know, like everyone's trying to get out, and there's. Only, you know, because you got to pay for the parking to get out, right? Uh-huh. So um, uh, while we were deadlocked, I was like, let's just, let me just kind of park, okay? So maybe we'll just walk down and see Abe. And I walked down to because I thought it was close. So I looked at the map. I'm like, dude, it's like 30 minutes away, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I can't walk for 30 minutes, and so can't you on that bum knee that you uh-huh. have, boy, you know? But as we walked downstairs, the meet and greet was just finishing. Uh-huh. And I saw Bowie, Buhawi. Um, it's it's inside and they're right by the door where the merch table was. That's like where the, the meet and greet was. He, I guess his wife was hel- helping sell sell the merch. Um, he was there and the meet and greet was happening. And then when the last, I waited until the last person the meet and greet. And from the door, I'm like, I'm like, buoy. And and immediately, cause cause I you know I have a green band which is normies. Yeah, yeah I had yeah. a normie band. Yeah. I didn't have a yeah. red band. You know where you can go like meet the band and stuff. So. I saw security already like coming and yeah, like yeah. that you can't be here, you know, like uh-huh. gonna gonna give me the you can't talk to him, you know, you have uh-huh. to give us $150. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I was like, hey Bowie. And then he looks and he sees me like, hey, he's like, um the ukulele, right? Like, uh, I'll dream. I was like, yes, yes. Cause I, I saw the, the the security coming. I'm like, see, he recognized me, yeah, yeah, he knows me. Yeah, please yeah. please tell the please tell the security guards to back yeah, off. Please yeah. tell Don't them not tackle. to hurt me. Don't tackle yeah. me, please. <laughs> it, it wasn't like, oh, yeah. oh, get him out of here quicker. <laughs> yeah. make, make sure to get him out. Yeah, yeah so Bowie is like super stoked. He's like, hey, Aldrin, I haven't seen you in years. How you been, you know, how you been? It's like, uh, I was like, yeah, yeah. So like, oh, let's take a picture for Alden because Alden's yeah, our, yeah. You know, our mutual friend, right? So he's like, let's take a picture for Alden. And then I'm like, hey, can I take a, you know, can I take a picture? And I was like, oh, by the way, this is my cousin boy, you know, yeah. and, and boy is just, didn't have words, you know, like did it couldn't get anything out. Like, and um, and I was like, okay, can uh, can I take a picture with you, Bowie? He's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay, get in. So he, he called on Boy like to get in yeah. and stuff. And Boy was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was that's awesome. It was just crazy to kind of see him squirm. And I no, don't normally use my zealous celebrity status <laughs> to do things like that, uh-huh. you know. But I'm like, no. I'm gonna make it happen for my friend. Like whatever kind of pull, you know, that that I have, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. try to make it happen. It's not for me, you know. It's 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 for boy. But it was, you know, it was nice to kind of catch up with boy, even for just like a minute or two. Yeah. Because um, you know, I asked him like he lives in the mainland now, so he'll only play with Parokin and Edgar if they're touring. Uh huh. So when they're in the Philippines doing local shows, there's a local bass player that plays oh, with them. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of nice that like, you know, I got to meet my, uh, I got to meet up with my friend because uh, he doesn't normally play with them. So yeah. when he does, he's there and I get to see it, which, yeah. is, which is awesome. So um, then, that's like the original lineup then, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. So um, he, yeah, without Vinch, it was everybody except for Vinch, for Vin, Vinci. Um, so uh, that night, and we'll get, this is where the ukulele part happens because people are like, <laughs> when are you going to talk about ukulele? So that night uh, we hung out with, um, with Abe and Karen, uh-huh. you know, at, at a place called Red Cafe, like in uh, in Kapiolani, which is the smokiest place that I've ever <laughs> been in. It's like it, you can smoke it. I didn't think you could smoke in bars anymore and uh-huh. stuff, but like yeah, yeah. there were not since the nineties. I guess <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they have the special whatever thing, but I you know whatever. Not knocking on it, but I'm just like there was uh-huh. no other places to sit. Maybe I was smoking. I was sitting in the smoking section. Yeah, and I'm just like oh, this, you know, um, and it's just super smoky. Either like. 
maybe just the place just smelled super smoky. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what it was. Maybe years of of, uh, of being in that <laughs> place just, just made it just stuck to the walls. You know, putting up for breathe. Yeah, like, yeah. exactly. Like maybe it breeze. was just like a like a like a thing that I smelt the walls and just stuck to there. <laughs> yeah. You know, from the nineties, it's just that bad because it seems like one of those places in Kapiolani. <laughs> but uh-huh. everywhere else was closed, and when, by the time we got out of there, we met up with uh, with with Abe. It was like midnight. Oh. You know, uh-huh. so. Um, we talk with Abe, we have a good time and stuff, and and same thing. Boy meets Abe, and he's like, you know, fa- yeah. fanboying out to uh, to to Abe. But I talked to Abe, and, and I was like, you know, I I told him I'm not like I'm not ashamed to uh, you know to to tuck my tail between my legs and, and ask you like I. But me and Abe have like kind of traded stuff before. We've talked about stuff, and you know he's given me advice on ukulele. Mm-hmm. But I kind of wanted to make it official, so I told him like, Abe, I know you're gonna think this is a joke, but I would love to take some lessons yeah. from you. And he's like, of course, he laughs still. You know, uh-huh. like he's like, are you serious? And then I told him, yeah, you know that thing that we were talking about with like with the uh, with the runs going down uh-huh. and stuff. You know, like I. You know, I've I've been doing some stuff on my own. I know you're the best, like um, like jazz improviser on the ukulele. You know, like hands down. I would like to you know to learn what you do. You know, mm-hmm. like as far as jazz improvising, chord tone soloing, and stuff like that. I'm learning some stuff on my own, but it would be great to have a teacher to uh, to kind of show me. Uh, if I'm doing things correctly, or if I'm, you know, or if if I should be going a different direction, yeah. I, you know, I, I'm almost forty, so I don't have that much the, the same like thirty years of, of, of playing <laughs> in order to get that, yeah, out. to yeah. yeah, to grind it out. I, I don't, you know, my 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 woodshed is uh, is gone already, you know. <laughs> so I, I asked him, and he's like, "Oh man, we got to, you know, we got to talking about that." And he kind of started giving me some advice, but he's like, "Hey, we'll just, you know, we'll figure out a time." And, uh, and and I'll do the lesson. So yeah, you know what I mean. Like no matter how good you think you are, like I e me, you know, <laughs> I recognize you know um, just the, the the ukulele as it's you know as something that like nobody can master. You can't like yeah. learn everything, every and every little thing about the ukulele. They're, like music is so diverse that everybody's different. So I you know even someone like myself would want lessons. You know, mm-hmm. just to make sure that I'm doing things correctly, or that my form is correct, or you know, I'm I'm making the right note choices and making sure they're they're efficient and not just like me trying to like you know trying to feel around and it's gonna take years. I want to expedite that yeah. and and just get you know get to a good level, um, and and that's when I can kind of self explore. Yeah, because yeah. once he kind of gives me, hands me the keys to like, okay, well, here's where you can get started. Um, here's things that, that you can do for now to kind of get you on the right track mm-hmm. of, of getting to do jazz soloing. Or And then I asked him about reharmonization. Like, how does he do that? I told him, you know, I work with a guitar. You know, I work with Aaron. So what are some cool reharmonization that me and Aaron could do? Mm-hmm. And that's like something that, you know, like I would love to learn. I don't know about like, and I didn't go to a fancy, you know, music school to learn about reharmonization with a, with two different instruments and what we can do. But I'm a big fan of like um, Domi and JD Beck yeah. and the way that Domi does reharmonization with her, with her keyboards. I'm just like, over the moon and would love 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 to do something like that so, with you know with with us as a duo so you know for all of you folks out there who's you know oh, uh okay sorry. i can i can step back if that's what you want i thought you wanted me to lean in but i can step back so for those of you folks who have been on the fence like just you know and i'm not saying that like oh you should take a lesson from us which you should <laughs> but <laughs> if any you know any kind of lessons i think just being um, guided towards the right direction is is so is worth so much yeah. because for me like there's a certain musician pride you know that I'm just like no nah, I can do this I don't need <laughs> Abe's help but the only way that I'll improve the only way that I'll get to see it from Abe's point of view is to take a lesson from Abe yeah or else like I'm just like you know the blinding the blind kind of thing. Uh. I, I hope it's like uh, Mr. Miyagi lessons. Yeah. <laughs> where it's like you go in expecting like, okay, I have my ukulele. I'm ready to learn. Yeah. I'm ready to learn to throw the punch. 
and then Abe hands you mallets for a vibraphone. <laughs> like, you gotta do this yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, this is your wax on, wax on moment. Yeah. So, okay, okay. But yeah, so um, I, I will be, I will be taking lessons from Abe Legumius pretty soon, and nice. you know, like, uh, like proper, you know, like yeah. proper lessons, and and of course, and I told him, I'm like, hey, uh, you know, if you don't mind, you know, I I do have a platform, so if there's something, you know, if there's nuggets of information that is good for me, and I feel like I should share it, is it okay for me to share? And he's like, yeah, just of course, you know, mm-hmm. like just any, um, any way to kind of elevate the ukulele community is good. So that's that's the thing. If I get better, then everybody gets better because. I have a way of explaining things yeah. and, and and I have a platform to explain to mm-hmm. and I think that way we can elevate everyone. I get elevated and therefore all the people that I teach get, get yeah. better and it's, it's good. Yeah. I yeah. think we, because we did like a, mm-hmm. a podcast where it's like what, what are the things you should do when you first take like a private yeah, lesson? Yeah. So like, and you did that from like a teacher's perspective. So yes. it would be interesting after. As a student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. true. Like that's what true, that's you true. find now. But, you know, like even before we like officially started our lessons, I had like, I want to work on this. I have this question and that question and that question, you know. <laughs> so he's already like, OK, I kind of know like what I want to teach Aldrin now. Uh-huh. But I, uh, you know, as a student, I also know where my level is mm-hmm. and, and I know where, you know, um, where I can start from. So it's not like I'm asking him like, like extra super duper level of, you know, of, uh, of music theory that I wouldn't understand. It's like, just teach me easy reharmonization with a, between a guitar and ukulele. Something I can understand, something and I can start applying. applying. Yeah, yeah. Starting, starting to do. So uh, I'm stoked, dude. I'm, nice. ugh, I am beyond beyond stoked about like taking some formal <laughs> lessons from a, from an ukulele master. And weird because, uh, okay, no, no, I don't want to talk about it. Because, but he might not want it. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's just that, okay, let's just say that he's, he considers himself primarily as a drummer yeah. rather than an ukulele mm-hmm. player. So it, it's that. You know, and you just kind of look into it that way, where him, him, like you know, being approached by by an ukulele player to you know, for, for yeah, primary an ukulele player as a lesson because he even said that he's like, I consider you as an ukulele player, but you know, like I think I'm a drummer, you know, yeah. that's that kind of thing. So it's um, yeah, he has he has reservations about being called a ukulele <laughs> player just because he's just like. That that problem, I, that but that just is what makes mm-hmm. his ukulele playing so good. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And that's what I told him. I'm like, dude, just you know, like, just you know, you're good. Maybe you're just fishing for compliments from me. No, <laughs> Abe, you're doing great. <laughs> no, no, I'm not, oh, no, no, no. Please, no more. Oh. Yeah. And now it's but, it's cool. I'm excited. I'm excited. So. But yeah, because like ukulele or well, music in general, yeah. there's like infinite side quests that you can yes. go on. Yes. Right. So. Yeah. So this is this is sort of like one side quest that you mm. would take and you sort of need somebody to lead you on. Yeah. That. <laughs> like, you know, like yeah. uh, I don't want to ex- cuz the only way I can play and explain this is like with with video games. So you guys want to hear the video game reference? <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're going to a high level raid <laughs> as a low level, but you uh-huh. want high level items yeah. so that it's, you can be high level. Uh-huh. It's that meme where it's like that guy <laughs> with all the armor yeah, like yeah, yeah. over the <laughs> other guy who's like, "Ooh, I'm doing so good." Yeah, like yeah. A game player, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, like Abe can can solo these he, yeah, high level could. raids. Yeah, yeah. So all I gotta do is follow Abe in through the high level uh, like, cave, uh-huh. and he while he kills the guys that I get experience for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or it's like he whittles them down, right? Yeah. And then, oh, like, I take the last kill. Yeah, yeah. Last kill. <laughs> go. This is, oh, yeah. One HP left, and then I hit it, and then, oh, look at all the HP that I got. Yeah, yeah. Same thing. Where he did all the grind, <laughs> you know, on yep. the ukulele. And then he's just sharing his wealth with me. Uh, (laughs) It's like he just, while you are like, oh, I have all this new armor. Yeah. (laughs) And Abe is just like, I guess it's time to go to the market and just sell all these like super rare things. (laughs) Yeah, man. See, so you can imagine a year after raiding high level raids with Abe, what kind of armor that I'm going to be coming back (laughs) with. Guys, I'm so excited about the cool armor that I'm going to get going on these raids with Abe. Get some some perps, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Some, some purple epic items. Yeah. Yeah. Some oh my god! <laughs> you Wait, took no, it no. a step further no, no, than no, that. No, <laughs> no I, I'm cool. I'm not not into games. I don't play WoW at all. <laughs> I have purple. it. Man. Wow. <laughs> oh, so good. Okay. What is what is the level cap for WoW now, Kai? It was a I. 
When I first you, played, it was a sixty. <laughs> we we made a bet about yeah. when the WoW servers would. Yeah, go. I owe you fifty bucks, dude. No, no. Still, I owe you. No, no. I'm a man of my word. <laughs> I know you're reminding me of the fifty dollars I owe you. Tell yeah. the audience what you, what our bet is. <laughs> oh, I don't even remember. I was when did we like say it was the end? Of it server? was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, it was a long yeah. time ago. And like, we wrote it on a board, right? Yeah, like. We were like, okay, this is when it's. It's an end. official bet. It's like a dream bets kahai. Wow, <laughs> servers are gonna cl- are gonna close. Two thousand blah blah. Yeah. You know? And two thousand blah blah went around, and I'm like, oh my it god, was, I guess it I'm was old. before twenty four. Yeah. And then and then on the it was on our like ukulele on the ground whiteboard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I put it just to make it official. I wonder, yeah, is it not on this? I know, maybe <laughs> maybe it says fifty dollars on it. Like the bet was fifty dollars. Uh-huh. I yes, I owe you fifty bucks. <laughs> just okay, I, it's coming. You wanna know the. <laughs> Right? though what? like and i i made that the oh do you have perps and stuff mm-hmm. i have not played wow i've never played wow <laughs> but you just heard the memes i guess yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just i know it from osmosis and i played other yeah. rpgs yeah. and other games i mean me too so. i don't play wow either i've never played WoW. i never touched <laughs> no. the thing never touched the stuff classic no 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 yeah <laughs> yeah i'm drug not free, even guy. once no yeah not even once <laughs> drug free buddy you know just um, say no I don't want to do this. See, Dare program. I'm a graduate of Dare, guy. Okay? <laughs> Not for me. I was above WoW. I played RuneScape. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, we got to yeah. stop. Yeah, yeah. We, we got some questions. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got some questions. Okay. Now, um, and then the next day, we hung out with Ian, and it was a good time. That was, And then we had Ukulele Club that, that day, which mm-hmm. I was late to because the plane was late. All good. Maybe we'll we'll expand on it later on. But Ukulele Club was great. Thank you for all of those people who attended the Ukulele Club. Uh, the March edition of the Ukulele Club. We have an Ukulele Club here on the island of Kauai every first Sunday of the month, uh, starting from six to eight o'clock. But apparently it's six thirty. <laughs> last night it was yeah. six thirty. <laughs> Even uh, me and Aaron were there, yeah. and people come earlier. Yeah. What? Yeah. I start um like start setting up everything yeah. around five thirty. People are coming in the door already. <laughs> yeah. oh, but now yeah. it'd be even more bad. No, because no, no. they were waiting for one hour. <laughs> like, oh, now it starts. But I think they like it, and they, yeah, they, they come just... to hang out with oh, each other. That's true. Because part of it is yeah, a, yeah, like a social yeah. thing, you know. Okay. All right. I don't feel bad at all then. <laughs> I'll come at 7 o'clock next time. <laughs> Let you guys talk even more. Yeah, I'll come at 7 next time then, I guess. Okay. So, um, yeah. Let's open it up for some, uh, for some questions from the audience. This, is, this doesn't have to do, you know, with, uh, with, with the stories that I told. It was just a nice little story. That t- I figured you guys would, would get a kick out of me hanging out with some ukulele legends. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, any question that you want, go. Uh, Groovy Girl said, would sanding an ukulele and painting it all fancy change the sound of the ukulele? Yes. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, because, you know, you're, you're transforming the, uh, the original thickness of, of, of an ukulele. Even if you just sanded it, if you took a piece of sandpaper and you just went like that, boom, you know, like that's taken off a layer of, uh, of, of one of the, of the coats of, you know, of, um, what's the word? Uh, finish. Finish, or... yeah, on the, on the ukulele. That's because the, if you're using like uh, nitrocellulose, whatever, like that, that one that people spray, like usually spray the ukuleles with that, you know, it, it, they usually do 15 coats. I think the old school Kamakas is like 15, 20 coats mm-hmm. of that stuff, you know? So we're talking really, really, really fine coats. So you're taking off like a coat. It, you know, uh, it might not make a difference, you know, that first uh that first coat being taken off but if you're sanding it to paint over it you know you're taking out the integrity of the you know um of the lacquer that's on there that kind of protects your uh, you know the protects the ukulele okay because the lacquer also protects as well uh, and then if you're putting paint on it um then you are uh you're then covering it if you're painting then it's thicker than mm-hmm. the lacquer is because the paint is just naturally thicker than uh yeah than than, than the aerosol spray. So because of the thick paint, now you're recoating the uh, you know like that piece of wood and making it thicker. And and we all know that the thicker the the wood is, the less um, that it can vibrate. You know, so that's why it will change it and not necessarily for the better. So if you have a high end ukulele that you know that um that that you, 
that you play on, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing uh, doing that sanding and painting on. Unless, you know, if you just, you don't, like... Don't really, yeah. Yeah, you, don't unless you don't care. And I mean, it, it yeah. is your ukulele. You can essentially do whatever you want with it, you know? Like, I'm not yeah. I'm going to tell but, you what to do with your own ukulele. But if you're asking me for this advice, then yeah, it will change it. Well, and not necessarily for the better. Yeah, yeah. if you're well, worried yeah. about sound... Yeah. Don't don't expect like don't expect to do it and the sound not to change. Yeah. Right? Like to mm-hmm. remain the same. Yeah. 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 But and I don't... The, the thing too is that yeah. like when they build the ukulele, mm-hmm. they sand the thickness of the wood down to a very specific yeah. thickness. And when you're so when the... Yeah, so if you're sanding off the finish, you, there's a like a very low degree of likelihood that you'll be able to sand it perfectly, yeah, evenly, intend, like, or no, no, just like evenly across oh, the entire yeah, thing. Yeah, so, yeah. so you'll probably sand it down, but some parts will be thinner than others, and it, that might, you know, affect I, the integrity mm-hmm. of the instrument as well. Yeah, I think instead of doing that, like, and I maybe they saw like people posting online, like, oh, here I painted my ukulele or I did that. But I think in most cases where they're doing that, they're getting like a cheaper laminate ukulele Mm -hmm. or a more affordable laminate ukulele. And then after that, it's not really, they're not painting it and like using it to be like a good playing ukulele. It's more Mm -hmm. about like, oh, here's how I can express myself by painting my ukulele. Yeah. If like that's your goal, then yeah, yeah, just go for it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I have, uh, um, I have sanded down and relacquered a kamaka before. <laughs> yeah, how did that go? Yeah. That I think I was in fifth grade, something how did like go? that. How how what was the what was the? Uh, it was like end product. Uh, how it was, was super it? shiny, uh, yeah. like across like the entire thing because like yeah. we we sprayed the fretboard and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it came came out good. Like yeah. you know, the sound wasn't the same, yeah. Yeah. but um. But I didn't know any different, and mm. my dad was like, "Like, if you want to do yeah, it, yeah. we'll do it." So was it like your your family kamaka? Um, I think it was. It might have been like my auntie's kamaka that they, you know, they they <laughs> yeah. probably bought it for like fifty yeah. bucks back in the the seventies <laughs> or eighties. Yeah. And then yeah. yeah, would you like if somebody gave you like an opportunity to go back in time and go, no, don't like, would you, do it? <laughs> would you be like, yeah, you know what, go home. <laughs> It'll be a fun yeah. story later. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, those experiences that shape you. <laughs> yeah, because because I think at that point, I guess it had been played a little bit, and like the finish was patchy. Yeah, just just from wear and use, and so like I I thought it was a good idea, you know. <laughs> it, it was shiny afterwards, you know, like. But um, but yeah, probably not. Do you still have that ukulele? Yeah, oh, I think show it. You're showing a podcast next time. I think it's like um, I I think some of the glue lifted, like you know, it, uh. it might have. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. But I still want to see it. I want to see it. Yeah, yeah, I have yeah, it. Bring it. Bring it all, dude. I think, yeah, it's I think in the we'd closet all be interested. Some, some place, but, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so, yeah, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Basically, like, if you don't care about an ukulele, you know, about that ukulele, and because who knows? What if what if you sanded it down and you painted it and it sounds better? Because that, yeah, that could happen. That could happen also. We're not saying that, like, that it will only make it worse. I'm saying... And probably not for the better, is yeah, what I'm saying. Probably but, not. And it yeah. most likely will de- um, change damage the sound. The, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it will damage the wood because like, those and, are yeah. also like harmful chemicals seeping into the wood. If you yeah. sand the protection off, it'll seep into the wood. Yeah. And it's not that if you, also, if you go and you just buy like craft store paint too, yeah. like that, unless you like paint it and then refinish it where mm. it's like uh, there's a finish coat over it yeah the mm. paint just might come off too because yeah like yeah. and if you see ukuleles that are colored or d- done something different mm. they're a lot of times they're not just like just a paint applied to the top of yeah. the ukulele it's like they're uh taking into consideration what type of wood that they're actually trying to like dye with a paint yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, like yeah. a stain mm-hmm. either stains or yeah. Certain... Oh, yeah or if it's like a flat color they'll do like a base coat and, yeah, yeah yeah that that should be the clip on instagram for this week is like kahai answers the or asks the question and i'm like nope that's the clip you know like would it change the you know or uh, sometimes yeah. that's it's as yeah. easy as that but that's yeah. it that's the clip for instagram this week <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sometimes it's just that easy <laughs> more softball questions everybody no no um but if you're feeling creative i would you know and if you really want to do that buy like like a like a makala or something like a 50 dollar mm-hmm. ukulele it'd be a fun art project i mm-hmm. think that's cool so i'm not 
discouraging you from you know from being creative and, and painting on an ukulele but just like maybe one that you don't mind painting or you you don't mind if the, the sound changes and yeah. not necessarily for the better so mm -hmm. if you don't mind those things and you really want to start a, uh, a project and be creative by all means go ahead i'm not i'm not gonna stop people from from trying to express themselves creatively yeah yeah, yeah. i think the probably the ukuleles where the sounds would change the least is like laminates and plastic ukuleles yeah. uh so if you want to do that but even that you know that's not a guarantee and then yeah i think it's better just to get like an ukulele that mm -hmm. you can say like i don't mind spending yeah. this amount of money for it mm -hmm. and this is more of an art project mm -hmm. that maybe i can play afterwards but mm -hmm. i won't mind either way yeah mm -hmm. so it's that yeah okay next okay uh rose said after you figure out a tune on a single string how do you go about turning it into a finger style a good question very good question so that means you know you've uh, picked figured out the melody line so that's mm -hmm. that's that's what it's saying like how then do you add the you know the background like to it the chords the uh, you know whatever you want to lay underneath that um you you would use basically your if you have the chords that's it you just lay the chords if you have them like say um, it, it's like a pop song, you know, that you learn the melody to or whatever. You can go online and figure out the, and, and ask the chords, you know, just go Google, what is the chords? And then Google will tell you, here's the chords and then try it out with that, you know? Um, but if you, if you do not have access to, you know, to what the chords are, you can always rely on like music theory on, uh, on figuring out what key, that song is in. That's when, you know, playing by ear is going to come in handy, trying to figure out what the chords is to that song. And then trying to figure out what the chords are to the, uh, to the melody line that you're playing. Okay. But if we're talking like an original song, like if you figured out a, like a melody, you know, like um, to an original song, that's a little bit harder because like in context, you know, like how do you go about like, um backing up that that original melody line it, it's always uh, not always but uh, i usually suggest people to uh to come up with some you know some chords so at least you get the movement going on like where does this you know does this go as far as like the chords and then then you write the the melody line on top of that because the melody line um, the chords will determine how the melody line moves you know kind of thing but you know uh i'm not gonna stop anyone if if like they get um, you know, they get they get like a, like an idea, like a melody line idea, because that happens a lot also, you know, like you just get them the idea for the for the melody line. Okay, so how do I do this? And how do I put chords around it? You take yeah. the melody line. Can you then, do one just oh, like a uh, simple okay, like one? Random, random, yeah. random, like ah. Uh, yeah. Something like that. Okay, so imagine that is your melody line. So now, how do you like? How do you figure out what you know what chords those are? Yeah. So if that's already a, yeah. a song, you can look up the chords. Yeah. Yes, you can look yeah. up the chords, and then uh, and and all you have to do is is play the uh, you know play the background or like the chords with that melody line. You know, if uh, uh, I don't want to reveal it just yet. You know, like <laughs> so. But if this is this is your original idea. Mm -hmm. Three, four. Right, that's that's like the, that's the idea. Now, you're what you're gonna do is like I mentioned, use a little bit of music theory, and then use some you know use some ear training. So, I you know I'm looking at a D sharp, B, and a C sharp. So, mm -hmm. C is definitely out of the question <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean like it because c means no sharps no flats um you know then let's see a you know you just go throughout all the scales that you're familiar with and yeah you what cross could reference. be what could be the, yeah. the base so it's not that. it's not in d because there's a d sharp you know it's also not in um uh it's also not in A because of the D sharp. Just like all these things that yeah. you should cross reference. But wouldn't so. you just try D sharp first to see if that would? Oh, uh, that... <laughs> so like so it, yeah, that doesn't sound like it. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it so. because um, with with D sharp you have like that that. What would that be like a B yeah. sharp? But like, and then just there, you know? but you know all the notes, so you yeah, can yeah, yeah. like try any of the. 
the chords mm. of those notes, mm. major and minor, to try. So mm. what would be the cor- chords for that little riff right there? So um, the, the chords for this little riff, it would be in B. Okay, so okay. You're, you're using two chords there. Yeah. Like. Ah. Or you can just do it with one chord. Yeah. But in, in your mind, it's probably two chords. Yeah. 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 It's in the key of B because that's the only one that has those, you know, those, yeah. those in it. Or, you know, one of the ones that has those chords in it. Uh-huh. So and then, you want so, to cross-reference. That yeah, so, so like, know? so they're asking, like, how do you turn that into a finger style? Like, you just did it automatically, mm-hmm. but, like, what goes into the thought process of doing okay. that? Very good. Um, I usually try to make my melody lines on the on the A string, meaning uh-huh. I have the top three strings to uh, to add the background to, okay? Yeah. The Simpsons. Uh, now, <laughs> so these three strings here. If I figured out that it's in B, right? So how do I play B? So here's my B, and then play and with my pinky finger because usually you know most chords are like our three chords, you know, our, our three, three finger chords, yeah, yeah? Uh, two three finger, some one finger chords and stuff. But the most of, most of them are two through three, right? Which means most of them are gonna have an open either pinky finger or our pinky and ring finger okay so in this case i'm using my pinky finger and i'm playing the b chord while adding that melody line that i just did that's one way to do it and if i know that the second chord is a c sharp minor same thing here it is on the uh, you know and that note happens to be in the c sharp minor there's other ways you can do it you don't have to do the stretch if you know it is in b um, maybe because if you're stretching too far Try to do, think of the uh, inversion of that. So it'd be, mm-hmm. so that would be that B. So maybe just for that. So if I'm going to hit this note here, I'm going to hit that that, uh, that B chord if I want to keep the, uh, the background behind it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like kind of like a process of elimination, right? Because mm-hmm. like if you went to an inversion even higher, yeah, then you would go too it's too high. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it would be too high. So that's that's kind of how how I do things. You can look up, you know, um, melody lines on the E string as well, but it's a little bit trickier, you know, to come up with the uh, the background chord too. But it it. it it's uh, it's the same process, you know. You want to with the leftover other two, str- uh, three strings. You want to create somewhat of a chord, you yeah. know. So another uh, an example of that is let's see if if we have like a let's see ah there it is okay. So just to cheat, it's in D. All right, so. So that notice that I changed my style instead of strumming because I know if I strum, I'm gonna hit that A, which is fine. You know, I'm holding the pointer finger. Uh, I'm holding the D with the pointer finger. If I were to do like a three finger way of of holding the D, that's still possible. And I'm doing that by um, by using my pinky finger on the when I hit this this I know. That's the open A string, so I can just kind of do. And I'm just being aware of uh, of which which string I hit and which string I I, em- I emphasize. Okay, you can do that a lot easier if you finger pick, and that's why I changed my um, you know I changed my grip to uh, to do more of a finger picking kind of strum. Um, we did a long uh, a long time ago. We did um, a video with Jake, and I think he did something like that where you want to do a uh, a finger picking but then knowing which string to uh, you know to add an accent whatever the melody line is on you you're gonna emphasize that string more so that's how that's how you do it honestly you know if you're coming up with you know with uh with with your own melody trying to figure out the chord is behind there what like what chord makes sense with those sequence of notes that you just created yeah yeah because there is a key that you're playing too okay so figure out the key then figure out the chords that, that your uh, you know that, that your song is uh, is based on, and, uh, and that's how you do it. Then you add you add the chord, and then you have the one you know the one notes or whatever yeah. or one string 
um, melody line, then the other three strings can kind of accompany that note. And you can also, you don't have to like play the uh, the background the whole time, just yeah. like how I've been doing, you know. Which is, you can just go. Uh, Yeah. So do that, like just whenever it's available, you know, or whenever it's possible for you to add the chord, then add the chord or wherever it, it fits tastefully. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to just be. You can just do. And that's just two strums yeah. and it fits in there, you know, uh, in, its, in its own way or. So. So very limited kind of strums actually makes the melody line stand out more because you're hearing less of what's what's backing it up and more of uh, of that melody line in front of it. So there's it, it's a pretty complicated you know uh, yeah. question, but in the most basic terms, that's how I can best put it. I think yeah, and I think like if <laughs> like learn. Uh, maybe you have a, like a song that you really want to play as a fingerstyle yeah. and like nobody else has done a lesson on it. But it's like try and learn other fingerstyle lessons from other ukulele players. It gives you an idea. Yeah. Yeah. And really like a lot of times if you look at people's arrangements, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, they're doing this because it's efficient to mm -hmm. play it like this. Not necessarily like or they're not going to go out of their way to make it harder for you to play. Mm -hmm. They're going to try and figure out ways that is like. I'm arranging this to make it so it fits the song, but then also it makes it so they can play it too. Like it makes sense. Yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, if you have the mel melody line, figure out where the chords come in or where they change, mm. and then usually on the changes you'll do the full strum. Yeah, you'll hold the chord and do the full strum, and then make sure that highlight your, your melody, melody line, line yeah, note yeah, comes out too, and then continue with the melody line for a little bit, then mm -hmm. do with a chord whenever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, we have on our store, we have uh, like a whole oh, course that yeah. Matt did yes. on chord melodies. Yeah. And he breaks it down. Like if you're, if you're sort of an analytical person, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's perfect because Matt is pretty analytical. <laughs> and he does it very like step by step. Like here's yeah. step, step one. And here's how, do you, how you create your own chord melodies. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it's a good one. Um, mm -hmm. We work pretty hard on that for... for with yeah. Matt, so I think, and I think, like, uh, if you learn from somebody who's like arranging it too, and especially if it's like a song that has singing or it has like a person singing the main melody, mm -hmm. you'll realize that like strums and other accents are mm -hmm. trying to replicate what the singer is doing, right? Like, they're mm -hmm. like accenting a certain part of the song, so yeah, that's mm -hmm. why they're you add a strum there or something, yeah, so yeah, yep. nice, okay. Um, last question, we have to have one more, yep. Uh, Sparrow said, what warm-ups do you recommend? Um, a combination of both like physical warm-ups and, uh, and actual ukulele warm-ups. So physical warm-ups, you know, like the shake is really good, like shaking that or whatever. And then like the grip and the release, and all like Chris Salvador kind of stuff, you know. Um, and the rock on inner piece, that's really good to do the, uh, the, the, um, of the worm. See, that's like, you know, like playing it on the ukulele. This is all the physical stuff, and all the ukulele stuff is like the, the worm is really good. And then like keeping it as low as possible is really good. Um, you can do the, uh, the spider exercise, you can do that one. Like we have that on the site, I believe. Um, you can do the, uh, you can do scales. You, there's like so much for like for warm ups that you can do. Really, like anything that isn't a song is technically like you know they can be like a warm up if you're. And then I talked about you know when you're doing scales or practicing scales, um, or warming up with scales or by practicing scales, focus on one and learn how to play that scale up and down. And, uh, and side to side, like inside out, whatever. Like you just want to get to know that one scale and don't just don't just play scales on scales on scales on scales, you know? Like really um, get familiar with the one scale that you're, you're working on and that could be like a good warm up. Yeah, so phys and anything physical 
and um, you know, uh, without with and without the ukulele, I should say. Yeah, mm -hmm. like a physical kind of without the ukulele is is really good. Um, and then a physical thing with the ukulele, like just getting your fingers moving, because I guess they're both physical. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, and like it's good to have like a mixture of both, and yeah. like start starting off with the shakes, and then doing like worms and stuff. But mm -hmm. even when you do the worm. Start off like slow with the worm and then build up speed and then yeah, get to yeah. like the max speed. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, it's like as a warm up, that's what you want, right? Yeah. Like, you're trying to get your fingers limber for when you're actually playing. Yeah. So focus it, on the form. Really focus on the form. That's, I guess, you know, like, that's one way of putting it. Because when you, um, Imagine like when you're lifting weights, when you're working out. It's not just about like lifting it as or getting like the set done as fast as you can. You know, like you, you do it. And and you like you look at your form if you're doing it correctly. It doesn't matter if it takes you a little bit to get the you know like or to uh, uh like or for like lifting weights. Your analogy is like people won't go into the gym and just go like I'm gonna go for my personal best. I'm gonna mm, lift yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Ever yeah, done, yeah. Right? Is like even you know it's like a like a really strong person will won't be or will go in and be like this is like really easy for me to lift, but I'm just trying to get yeah. my muscles like actually. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's a difference. And I mean, you can just like curl it like super fast, you know? <laughs> but if you like actually take your time and do it correctly, it like it, it'll uh, it'll target like the, the muscles yeah. a lot, you know, a lot better. This is coming from the most muscular guy in the world, <laughs> by the way. Take advice from me, everybody. Ah, I won like what a Mr. Olymp Olympia <laughs> five years in a row. So take it from me, guys. <laughs> As yeah, just, as evidenced yeah, by so just check this out, okay? <laughs> so yeah. visual you, evidence. That, you can't teach that. <laughs> can't teach that. Can't teach that. <laughs> yeah? yeah. Oh, but well, one of these can't teach that. Mm -hmm. That's no. Mm -hmm. You can't buy that either. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> ah, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's your thumbnail guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The whole time I was thinking that. Yeah, that that is my thumbnail. <laughs> Made it easy. Uh, yeah, I can't teach that. No, but on the thumbnail you gotta like make it look bigger. Okay. <laughs> Please. You gotta do the the thing where you you put your your head back and then your arms forward so that in the camera. <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah. Like, the, so in the look, camera, it looks, looks swole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that just make me look as swole as you can guy all right take the photoshop stretch tool and just like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right um yeah. do you okay. um do you ever do like that like for warm-ups kind of like if you're doing scales do you do that skipping one that you do for band yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, so that uh yeah. or you know yeah, like for a, a scale. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So skips. I call it skips. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. sure enough. Right? So, oh, so yeah, so you're, that's how you know I actually do that. Yeah. So you start with one note, skip the yeah, next note. Yeah. So instead of going in sequence, so you play the first one. So like one, three, two, four. You yeah, know, yeah. One, three. Five, four, six, five, seven, six, eight, seven, nine, turn. Uh, Not uh, ten, eight. <laughs> eight, eight, eight. I just went seven, nine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think it's something too that people kind of have a misconception about with like warm ups and stuff. Yeah. Is there like, my goal should be to just play it like that right yeah, like yeah. To get to that speed and stuff but if you're doing a warm-up for yourself mm -hmm. like no that's no, not cool. it's it's about accuracy and it's about like you know getting the uh the kind of tone or that, that, that you want because like, yeah. you can fo you can double dip triple dip and stuff it's not just about warming up your hands but you can also work on tone at the same time you can work on your form you can work on volume maybe you can work on you know like accuracy and clarity <laughs> of the note yeah. all that stuff yeah and it should be for you right yes. like that should a warm-up when it should like I was gonna ask you, how long do you think people should dedicate their themselves to the warm up? But I feel like it's it's different for everybody if yeah. you're doing it at home. Yeah. And it's to the point where you feel like, okay, my hands are ready and I'm ready mm. to like tackle tackle my serious practice mm. or to actually work on the song or to do something else, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So usually you would do 
whatever scale that the song that you're going to be working on is yeah, in, right? Yeah. So you want to you want to make it kind of make sense. So that's that's what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah we um, check out the the since we're almost done. Like check out the podcast uh, like a month ago where we talked about that or something. But well, Kahai will link it, right? <laughs> no, you I, don't know what I don't know what podcast you're talking about. Um, we're, when I was talking about like the the practices, how to how to practice scales, um, efficiently. You know, where you work on one scale, then like you uh, you you do you know you do the uh, you do that scale. You do like all the inver- you, know, you do you figure out the chords in that scale or the chords in that key. Then you figure out like the inversions of the chords in that key. Then you figure out it's like. How do uh you know? <laughs> it's one of them. But... Hey, yeah. Yeah. sorry, because <laughs> because we have a lot of podcasts. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, you've talked yeah, about scales on as soon at least as more we figure out two. which one it is, then we'll listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't 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 look too soon. <laughs> oh, I don't. I don't usually list podcasts. In, yeah. No. In, I don't do. Oh, like then, show, then it's like, then it's it's all good, you know. They can just, go look you for can it. just go look for it. <laughs> you should be listening to all of them anyway, right? That's that's well. That's, <laughs> should that be the uh, the attitude going forward? <laughs> the the mentality is just be listening to everything that we say. <laughs> and it's like oh, and, I, and then uh, get caught. Oh, but didn't you say in episode thirty six that you should be I'm like oh no? <laughs> you ever seen that, that like that Simpsons where like the guy is like oh you know like an itchy and scratchy. Uh, he played he played the same note on the piano, but like it's two different notes uh-huh. that we hear on the in the music. Are we uh, are we led to believe that it's uh, you know it's a different <laughs> piano or? <laughs> it's like oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah on episode 55 why yeah. did you say this and he's like nah, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i own episode uh 100 and whatever you you called clay a legend um but but then next you, you called Cra- craig chi a legend so who's really the legend there's, <laughs> it's more than one legend there's legends <laughs> but yeah we can get we can get corrected I don't, I don't actually care because our opinions change all the time we're giving opinions you know i gave my opinion changed i <laughs> i have like chris found it already <laughs> <He's> oh. <laughs> there it is which one is it uh he said 98 maybe uh and let me check yeah uh <laughs> maybe maybe uh, yeah i'm not sure exactly if okay well, maybe but check that one out though <laughs> yeah. okay so um thank you so much for tuning in to the ukulele on the ground podcast thank you for all your questions if you want to send in questions for us because sometimes the guys ask me questions you know it's, but today i was it was just some, um uh, <laughs> oh he said he, he said that's probably not it he, oh. he was just joking <laughs> okay so um yeah, yeah so today i was just recounting my uh, my my weekend but uh, usually we we get you know like a question in um, and we we get question and an, uh, and answer them from uh, from the emails and stuff like that. So uh, feel free to email us at questions at ukulele on the ground. Uh, questions <laughs> at questions <laughs> at ukulele on the ground dot com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see the rubber band guy. See you. You see you. You see, oh, you see audio band. listeners yeah. have no idea what just happened. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> you did a rubber band. Yeah, see, that's why to do, to do this. What you guys don't know is when I go like this, there's actually a button off screen that like that I touch, and then and then it goes on, right? Or <laughs> or I no no no. I'm actually you know I'm going like this, and I'm tapping an oompa loompa on this side, <laughs> and just like hey, can you <laughs> keep the graphic up, you know? And that that's it, you know. So if if you know, if you're like, oh, maybe you know, you should pay those guys more. I like, I wish we got paid more. You know, like, and rubber bands. You know, rubber bands, guy. People are like, oh, I guess you get you guys, you guys got a lot of subscriptions now. Like from ever since mentioning the rubber bands, and the rubber bands went away. Nope, still here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you'll know if we get more subscriptions because then we'll go to a different color rubber band oh snap what yeah blue right you're aiming for blue broccoli rubber bands yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or asparagus. asparagus rubber bands yeah yeah <laughs> ex- I, asparagus is not cheap <laughs> well aaron, aaron has to buy that because i didn't even know asparagus yeah. comes with blue rubber bands <laughs> <laughs> So, um, check out all the videos that we've uh, that we've been making. I think we just 
put one out a few days ago for um, Too Experienced by Barrington Levy. It's a reggae song. Classic, classic. People who uh, who love reggae and people who, you know, who are reggae enthusiasts are probably like, yeah, Barrington, that's old school. You know, that's <laughs> like, if you know, you know. It's not like one of those, you know, it's, it's not like a mainstream reggae artist, right? It's not like a Bob Marley or a Sean Kingston <laughs> or a, or a uh, who, who's another one? Ziggy uh, Sean Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Paul, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, or or a Shaggy. <laughs> it's it's like old school reggae. Um, Barrington Levy, really, really, really good stuff. So make sure you uh, you check that out. Um, we have uh, we have a bunch of other videos for you folks. I think Kahai is is cooking up another video, right, Kahai? Yep, and it should be out pretty soon. Yeah, and or uh, not not pretty soon, but uh, in the middle of the month. Yeah, mm-hmm. keep it locked in. Also, uh, shop.ukuleontheground.com. You guys want to help support us to get rid of these rubber bands? Shop at do, uh, shop.ukuleontheground. Not at shop.ukuleontheground.com. Pick yourself some uh, some cool merch, um, and then uh, grab some accessories for your ukulele. We have that video that we talked about with mats available on shop. Right? Is it available there? Yep. yep. Okay. We'll available on shop.ukuleontheground.com for sale. Is the um, what is it? Unlocking chord cha- uh, chord melodies. Yep. Yeah. Unlocking chord melodies by Matt Dahlberg. If you were mm-hmm. interested in what we talked about as far as chord melodies goes, uh, that was one of the best um, in a chord melodies course, especially if you're as analytical as uh, as Matt Dahlberg is, because he really breaks it down. He turns it into a uh, you know a, a, into a. It's just, a formula, right? He comes yeah. with uh, comes up with a formula, like, and yeah. that's not that's he not, has like a, legit, like there's a formula. Yeah, he calls it like a decoder ring. Yeah, yeah. So, it's so pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> you, should, you check that. It comes with like, uh, and it's not just like the videos. It comes with actual like you know like examples, examples, yeah, and yeah. stuff. Yeah, and a work, to, workbook, uh, a workbook yeah. for you to use your decoder ring too, which is awesome. Yeah, mm-hmm. so check that out now. Um, how to unlock chord melodies with Matt Dahlberg. Um, there's other ones in there as well. I think, you know, uh, Soul Secrets Revealed. We have Mastering Your Fretboard and all that good stuff. So grab some ukulele goodness over at shop.ukuleleontheground.com. But if you really want to support us, and I, maybe I should be doing this at the top of the show. Or maybe I'll start doing it from next show on. I'll do it from the top of the show. Um, ukuleleunderground.com songs and lessons ukuleleunderground.com and sign up for UU Plus that uh, that grants you access to all our exclusive videos that we've uh, that we've done all throughout the years um, we have uh, um, we have breakdowns I guess of like the um, of all the songs and uh, and the solos that, that we do here on Ukulele Underground so make sure you check that out and exclusive videos at UU Plus Okay. Um, anything else, gentlemen? Yeah. Uh, the open mic is open this mic. Thursday. Yeah, open mic is this mm-hmm. Thursday. So on Thursday at one p.m., twelve p.m. Uh, I thought we were gonna go with twelve, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah no, twelve is good. I just that's what I was asking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so twelve p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. We have uh, the open mic, the UU open mic. Um, that's that allows us to actually get everybody that like if, the, if people want to you know if everybody want to go instead of us like okay guys it's like four we gotta we gotta cut this short it's like 4 30 or whatever yeah. it may be at least this way we can let everybody have a turn um who who wants to you know who wants to go so that'll be fun 12 p.m hawaii standard time just log on to oh, don't even log on just go to ukula on the mm-hmm. and uh, and click on the banner at the top that should be there at 12 p.m hawaii standard time on thursday that leads you to the um to the zoom room where we uh host the open mic you can do one or two songs uh but it's a two song set um we basically put you in queue as soon as you raise your hand via zoom uh and yeah just entertain it's a super safe place uh everyone's pretty encouraging and uh and and we we cheer everyone on we want we want to see what you're up to you want to see what you've been uh, what you've been jamming on what you've been working on and uh and we want to see all the talented people that we have here in our community okay all right any uh anything else uh no yeah okay if you're on Kauai mm-hmm. this saturday we'll be at the um be at the night market uh, in downtown Lihue, so that's mm-hmm. uh, a, a Crest Street. Crest Street. Yeah, Crest yep. Street. It starts from 
five, o'clock. Uh, four o'clock yeah. till till about eight, nine o'clock at, at night time. We're um, you know, we're holding an ukulele contest. First place prize is an Islander ukulele. So it's an Islander ukulele first place prize, and we're going to be giving away um uh, to the runners up free uh free months of um. Of the AG Ukulele Academy that we're opening up on the 11th of March. We're very excited for that. So we're super stoked. Make sure you check it out. Go to aldreen.com for more details on the AG Ukulele Academy. Yeah. Okay. First place also gets uh, lessons. Too. Yeah, lessons. Yeah. So lessons yeah. For, for first, second, and third place. Um, but the first place person gets goes home with that ukulele. Yeah. yeah. So if you're on Kauai this Saturday, yeah. sign up uh, or just show up, sign up to yeah. be part of the contest. Yeah. yeah. Fun. Yeah, we don't know how many people are going to actually sign up, so you have probably have a good chance of yeah, winning something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. So make sure you uh, you do that. And um, anything else? Yeah, ukulele uh, AG Ukulele Academy opening up March 11. Sign up now at aldreen.com. So aldreen.com for the AG Ukulele Academy. Mm-hmm. Alright gang We'll see you folks next time We'll see you on Thursday For the uh, for the open mic If not I'll see you Friday For a little Friday live jam Have a great week And uh, keep jamming that uke Aloha